Hello, internet. It's Kendo here. It's been a very long time for me since I've been in front of the camera. It has been that long for you guys, because you guys have been seeing pre-recorded videos for a hot minute now that you didn't know. Movie magic. <laughs> but I'm rusty, and what better way to get over the rust than to do a get ready with me. You guys like these, and I like these. So. And I also have a lot to talk about. <laughs> I just came back from a trip from New York. That was actually my first time in New York City, and I was hanging out with one of my best friends for thanks giving we had friends giving and it was so much fun i bought a lot of makeup of which i will be using today because i paid for it and i have a habit of buying getting storing makeup and never using it <laughs> and especially not using it on camera so i'm gonna like make sure that it gets it i'm not wasting my money so it seems like one after another just weird funny things were happening <laughs> while i was gone and i was like well well, okay. As I did last time, people let me know what they were doing while they watch or listen to my Get Ready With Me's. A lot of people just have them on when their boss isn't around so they have something to do. A lot of people watch me on the toilet, no judgment. Have your best thoughts come to you on the toilet. And I like to be a part of that whole personal expansion, self-help. <laughs> situation why you better yourself on the toilet but before we get started it is my pleasure to announce that this video is in collaboration with an app called drop it's basically an app that allows you to hook up your card and then as you spend it as you usually would you'll be racking up points that will allow you to redeem gift cards for different places so it's basically like here's a reward for shopping here's more shopping <laughs> Since it is that time of year, people are shopping, you know, the whole Black Friday thing, the whole Cyber Monday thing just passed. I should have got this to y'all earlier, my bad. <laughs> but you know, Christmas ain't here yet, so if you haven't gotten presents, you could still find presents, you know. I tend to rack up a lot of points at Starbucks, McDonald's, Lyft, just rack them up and then you can get gift cards for other places. I think I'll go for Starbucks. Just cause you know, the whole circle life thing, like I spend a lot of money on Starbucks and then get money on Starbucks, you know, circle of life. I don't know how to do it. <laughs> but if I didn't want to redeem it there, I could redeem it at Dunkin' Donuts, Old Navy, Best Buy, Coffee Bean, IHOP, Amazon, Applebee's, Nike, Uber Eats. On God, how much money I spend on Uber Eats. Never mind, I'm saving it and using it on Uber Eats. <laughs> Especially since I'm banned from DoorDash. <laughs> Sephora, you can use it basically anywhere that you would probably shop already. Drop was also kind enough to do a giveaway with me for this video. They'll be giving away a hundred gift cards that range between $5 and $25. So once you download the app, link up your card, just put the code Kenny, and that'll be your way of syncing on to the app and participating in the giveaway. Good luck, everyone. So big thanks again to Drop for partnering with me for this video, and let's begin. The debauchery. So I've already done my skincare and everything today. For those of you, if you're wondering, I did use my skincare from the last video. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, my collaboration with Wish Train came out where I just collaborated. My favorites, shameless plug. If you want to check that out, that'll be down in the description box as well. Hopefully I used everything from the original set except for the vitamin E mask, blue cream, blue midnight cream, midnight, What? what is it actually called? Midnight blue calming cream. <laughs> Because I didn't want something that was super duper dewy. I wanted it to all just be kind of neutral, but I wanted it to be moisturized. I also used a lot of the Yang set because my blue drops ran out. So I was like, okay, we're good. We're doing a little funky today. And my skin looks nice, so it's fine. But today I'm going to be using this. This is from La Messier. This is her tinted moisturizer. I'm laughing because it was like $40 to <laughs> tint and moisturize. Me and Iris were in one of the department stores. I want to say Saks, like the, the actual like, ooh, Fifth Avenue, Saks. Yeah. But anyway, we were in the department store and I was like, I want someone to match me for a foundation. I genuinely believe that I have one of the hardest skin tone <laughs> colors to get right for things, especially if it's full of coverage. But basically my issue is that foundations are either too yellow or they're too red. I'm quite neutral. And if they are neutral, they're too light. So like I said, I just got back from New York, which was so much fun. I spent it with one of my best friends, Iris. Those of you that are like OG OGs, you might remember her, but she hasn't really been in a whole lot of videos of mine. But we did film a uh, vlog I guess, a vlog while I was there. So we answered a bunch of you guys' questions about anything really. 
a lot of very, very interesting questions about friendship were asked. And it was really good for us too, so we can like think more about our own friendship and kind of really qualify and quantify what it is that makes us friends, which I think is a very healthy exercise to do, you know? And it was interesting because we would just talk about kind of the things that we like about each other as far as like how our friendship is going. And people would be like, yo, I realized <laughs> my friendships kind of suck. We're not really friends. We just hang out a lot, which personally I'm in the vein of thinking that if the only reason y'all are friends is because you're near each other, then y'all not friends. Also, it was interesting because we got a, so many questions about like how, what is the worst fight you guys have ever had? And I'm, and I found it so interesting that that was such a common question. Cause like, do y'all go around fighting with y'all friends regularly? I understand maybe once or twice y'all have like a scuffle, but like on the reg y'all arguing about stuff i don't think that's healthy i don't think that's healthy in any relationship if you're like constantly arguing especially if it's over some dumb stuff i feel like arguments especially be fr between friends must be like they need to be mad important to be worth even going into in my opinion i feel that way about romantic relationships too if y'all always arguing that's not cute that's not, <laughs> that's not like, oh my God, that's just what, that's just what we do. He cheats on me. You know, that's just us. We, we get back together. We work through the hard times. <laughs> like y'all ain't working through no hard times. Y'all are toxic. Y'all do not need to be together. Some of y'all don't need to be with nobody. Y'all need to work on yourselves, honey. But no, it was a very interesting exercise. We ate a lot of food. Shout outs to Bibble and Sip. Best cafe I've ever been to. Ironically, their coffee isn't that good, but, <laughs> but their desserts particularly their cream buns a one and their fruit tarts quality but yeah it was just so much fun spending time with her and i also saw my other friend jamie because she also lives in new york now so we all got together but jamie wasn't there for very long she had to go back to ironically go back to michigan but no it was good to get some of my girls together claire was there in spirit but while i was away i was you know trying to keep my social media popping. I'm not very good at being consistent on social media outside of YouTube. YouTube, I'm pretty consistent, but like, and Twitter, I'm pretty consistent because I just talk out of my butt. But um, like Instagram, y'all get a picture for me once a week, if that. How y'all be doing it? Y'all got a whole, y'all got private lives and rocking Instagram on a consistent basis, how? And speaking of not keeping up with social media, I have a bad habit of not checking my DMs. Bad habit. So if you sent me a DM about like, oh Lord, Kendall, please answer this. Or like, my life is gonna be in shambles. I assume your life is in shambles. <laughs> but the one time I go into my DMs and somebody sends me a picture of some company in Nigeria, took my pictures, edited, edited them, and made them into an advertisement for skin bleaching. <laughs> I was, oh my God, I was crying laughing so hard. What is this? This don't even look like it was unedited. <laughs> like y'all didn't even try. This is a mess. The before picture was severely darkened. Like it looks blue. I look purple. And then the second picture whitewashed. I look like I'm taking a Selka from heaven. This is my obituary. <laughs> And it was just so funny because it really does send home that some of these companies out here crazy. When I tell y'all it was the funniest thing ever because I was like, y'all really bold out here. Y'all bold as hell. Hashtags were fraudulent too. They was like, yeah, another happy customer. Like ain't nobody, I've never heard of y'all. <laughs> and it was so funny cause I was on Twitter and I wasn't mad. I was just very confused. I was like, what is going on? <laughs> Y'all crack me up though. Everybody's like, sell them, sell it, get the bag, sis. I was like, do you really think that this company has any money? <laughs> Why would I sue? I'd end up spending more money on myself suing somebody that has no money. I'm not that petty. I'm never petty enough to make a point at that extent. I'm just like, y'all look silly. Y'all look humorous. And then, oh, I forgot about this part. Somebody in the comments was like, is this real? And they were like, yeah, of course. Check your DMs. We'll let you. Like, what? Y'all really out here? So they are finessing you. True tanning can give you melanoma. But, <laughs> but you're a lot less likely to have like lasting effects from tanning occasionally than you are hardcore bleaching your skin. Like you, you will be burned. Also, if you're black and you um, bleach, 
you look like a sausage casing. <laughs> And I don't and I don't want to condone that type of behavior. Just ludicrous. Anyway, palette that I spent too much money on, like a hundred dollars. Don't tell my mama. She don't need to know it ain't her money. This is the Color Boss Pro Palette from Il Maquillage. Maquillage. Basically, this palette is made in Italy and I got it in New York because they have a storefront in New York. And basically the brand is like, oh yeah, we're super minimalistic. We're super like chic and Italian. Which was like, oh, okay, cool. And the makeup is gorgeous, like this palette. Yes, this is beautiful. And I'm not gonna deny that this is a gorgeous palette. But when I tell y'all the story around that entire visit to the, God, I hope she don't see this video. There's a woman that works there that has the big, like the worst makeup I've ever seen in my life on her face. Now we're being a little shady getting dinner. And I, she was like, where do you wanna go today? And I'm like, I wanna see her face. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, the Lord is still working on me. Did I say that I'm perfect? I'm not. So did we make an entire trip across town to see this chick's makeup? Yes, we did. So at least I did. I don't know what, Iris was just along for the ride. <laughs> the store is quite the minimalistic, black, chic. The store owner is there which was shocking. Cause how often do you walk into a store, like a makeup store and like the owner is there? It was really weird. Head makeup artist, very, very pale white woman who um, looked like she about to have a night in drag. Now, I don't mind the look to each their own, to whatever, do whatever you want, sis. It's your face, I don't care. I'm just saying, as a person who is supposed to be recommending me products and you're like, this lays perfectly on the skin. And I'm like, does it? <laughs> like four layers of foundation on orange contour that was just one line like this like one thick line the same line orange down her nose lip liner touching her nose and around her mouth it was an inception mouth like an inception lip like a lip within a lip and it was just so much <laughs> and especially again the irony that this is like a minimalist brand like they're it's very similar in many ways to mac but yeah she's like full-on drag makeup and we're like looking at the foundations um and she's like hey what what can i help you with let me try to get you to buy a bunch of stuff here and to be honest with you i wasn't really interested in anything but the eyeshadows but i was like well since we've been looking for foundations and nothing matches me we decided to both get matched for foundations me and iris while she matches iris for foundation she then decides to just give her a beat. <laughs> now, I will say, ironically, considering matching foundations is generally speaking, one of the harder things to do for a makeup artist or, you know, for anyone really to get that good undertone, to get a good, you know, match. But she got it spot on. Like the, the, the color was perfect, but she started doing other stuff. <laughs> she just threw stuff on her face like a blizzard like a tornado just whirled around and then she had makeup on problem is it looked like she was in a tornado and just whirled around and suddenly makeup was on she gave her a bronzer but didn't blend it she just said boop boop there you go put a lip on boop we'll put some eyeshadow and just like not have it all the way at the like her lash line so it looked like she had beige liner on highlight that somehow got here it was just, it was a lot. Poor Iris, she didn't want to be rude, so she over there like tapping her face real fast when she wasn't looking. <laughs> I wanted to be matched for a foundation as well because again, she did a good job matching colors, so she matched me perfectly to a T. But I guess that's when she was like, oh, I'm gonna give you a highlight. She put concealer on and it was like basically stark white, but maybe like a dot, like a dip of yellow. So it was white as hell. I looked a hot mess. I considered her a little pushy, like as a salesperson, like, oh my God, babe, you look so good. Oh my God, I would wear that. And then the moment you say that, that makes me not want it. But after we were there for a hot minute, I ended up just getting this palette because that was the only thing that I was interested in really. Literally, she did not put anything from this palette on me, which is also ironic. We were there for like 30 minutes. She was just like putting all this makeup on and the one thing that she didn't put on at all, I was like, yeah, I'll take that. <laughs> and they are buttery smooth. Hold on, let me see. Like big. What? <laughs> but that's the thing that was so interesting about the whole thing. I was like, I don't know if you should have her up front because y'all got good products, but she makes me want to buy nothing. <laughs> like, okay, I ain't gonna lie. This is this is kind of 
um, incredible. They almost have the texture of creams though. Like they have a, they have like a viscousness. The eyeshadow palette itself is like 80 something. And then you pay like $10 for this dumb cover. This cover is freaking stupid. Why don't you have a cover on your eyeshadows? Like on a palette, why don't you have it? Like that's dumb. But yeah, there were so many cool experiences we had. We went to the museums that of course New York is, um, well, one of the one of the things that New York is famous for. No one's just gonna say, yeah, New York, the place with the museums. I went to the Met for the first time. Oh my God, the Met is such a wonderland. It's so beautiful. <laughs> it's such a glorious place of human achievement. Centuries upon centuries of human excellence. Humanity has so much potential to make like incredible, gorgeous things. And why does it do such suck? I'm walking through the entire place thinking like, is it innate for human beings to make clay pottery? Cause I felt like that was a very universal thing. Like every civilization had their own version of clay pottery, large gargantuan statues that just dwarfs humankind, but made by humans. How did y'all make these? Y'all had nothing but like stone and maybe a knife or something. Like how y'all build this? How y'all lift it? How y'all keep it from moving? I, I have so many questions, like engineering wise, you know, in 8 billion BC, you like, you know what? Completely unprovoked, we gonna make a giant statue. Not only we're gonna make said statue, it's probably gonna kill like a fourth of us to make it, let alone lift it, but that's just some stuff that we as humans must do. Thought provoking experience. I'm sitting there looking at the marvelous creations that have lasted throughout both time and space, feeling a visceral inferiority complex. Wow, these shadows are gorgeous, whoa. They feel like butter. It's a really weird texture. I've never felt this before. The Italians always doing the powders like nobody's business. They're cold, like I can feel their temperature wise. They're cool. Me and Iris ate every food and it was so delicious. It was so inspirational too, all the food. I'm like, I could cook these if I were like, not so lazy <laughs> like since i'm banned from doordash which is probably the most diverse of all the delivery services in my area at least i'm very limited on places that deliver because the main one like the biggest one in the area uh banned me <laughs> a few months ago <laughs> so many people had so many questions like kendall what did you do <laughs> to get banned from so i actually told the backstory all on twitter before but i tweet a lot so it's like back there but it got brought up again when somebody was like, is it me or does like DoorDash always never deliver my stuff? I was like, fun fact, I'm, I'm, I'm banned from them. So I'm probably not the one to ask about how you can get yourself from DoorDash. Um, basically like six months ago, my family and I discovered DoorDash. It was the most wonderful experience. They delivered everything. So we knew that we were gonna hit that up. I wanna say every day for maybe three, like two or three weeks we ordered from DoorDash specifically. We were we were in that bad boy. We were all up in there. We're going to order again a different day and it just won't go through. And we're confused. We're like, what's going on? At first we start to think maybe it's the, ch the card that we use, which was strange because that was the card that we had been using the entire time we had been using the service. So we switch it up. We use a different person's card. It still doesn't work. We use a few people's card. And at this point they're like, yeah, so um, you can't use any person's card because you are banned. <laughs> just, just like that, we got banned. And I was like, what? <laughs> so me and my family called the like customer service or whatever of DoorDash and we're like, yo, why are we banned? And then they're like, oh, well, we'll look into it and we'll give you a response. I wanna say like a good month passed and no one updates us on anything, like nothing. And I'm just sitting here like, why can't we use it? <laughs> like, why can't we use it? So we call the customer service thing. My mom is quite the argumentative person on the phone. So she's like, um, all we want is to use it. Like, what is going on? So they say they'll look into it. Something like a solid six months since this all started. Uh, nothing. And then I get a random email that's like, hey, we looked over your case. Um, sorry, we still can't let you use our stuff you were against policy i don't know like you did something against our policy and i was like can i know what i did that was against your policy no can i use well since you've like settled it whatever that means can i use the app again no well what, 
what, what? Why? We can't tell you that. Why? <laughs> Somehow I forget. I think I was on Twitter just talking about it and people were like, well, maybe you should just like talk to DoorDash's Twitter or something. So I go to DoorDash's Twitter. I'm like, yo, why am I banned? <laughs> Why did you ban me? Why don't you want my good melanated money? Basically, they're like, oh, I'm sorry. Why don't you DM us? So I DM them. So they DM me and I'ma just put what that whole interaction was here. Cause it was actually so funny. It was, <laughs> it was the most hilarious thing ever. But yeah, that was the interaction. And I'm just like, God, I just want Chipotle delivered to my house, dude. That's all I want. So with that said, if you were wondering, did that ever get resolved? Nope, I am still banned. I am still very much so banned. I still don't know why. I think somebody low key like reported us, but for no reason, cause we didn't do anything. All we did was order from y'all, take the food, go inside, snack on it. I don't know, maybe we forgot to tip somebody and they got mad, I don't know. But yeah, thank you guys so much for enjoying the boxes. Um, I was, oh, and also sorry about the whole first day or two of the whole thing. So if you have no idea what I'm talking about, in my last video, I announced that I did a collaboration with Wish Trend, which was just like a curated box of my favorite products from them, which are actually my favorite products just in general, not just from them. It's like my favorite skincare products. I wanted to upload it on the 19th, but 19th was the first day of Wish Trends, like, Black Friday thing and the whole website just crashed. It was <laughs> is undeniably a mess. So I held it off for a day and I thought everything was kind of fixed or whatever, but nope. <laughs> but it was weird cause it was crashing for some people and it wasn't crashing for other people. Like people that ordered on desktop had less of a problem than like people that were ordering like through mobile. It was, it was a whole thing though. Um, so I would like to say sorry for you guys that were having such a stressful time. I'm so sorry. Despite, despite the hiccups, um, it was so interesting because apparently y'all uh, shocked and confused Wish Trend <laughs> because within, I would say maybe within 24 hours, I got a message from one of the Wish, from one of the Wish Trend people that I, you know, the contacts or whatever. And she's like, okay, so fun fact. <laughs> You um, sold what we thought you would sell in this month, just based off of how things went last time. We thought you'd sell about this much in a month. Yeah, you sold that yesterday. So um, that was interesting. Oh, okay. <laughs> that was incredible. Again, another situation where my viewers are just very, very intense. Y'all are so intense. And I honestly, truly, very much so appreciate it. You guys don't know how much it means to me. I don't know if you guys know how much it means to me because I feel very powerful about collaborations, sponsorships. Actually, I've been meaning to talk about this. This is that time of year where influencers do generally do a lot more collaborations simply because, you know, it's the, simply put, it's the shopping time of year. <laughs> There's a lot of collaborations, a lot of companies giving out a lot of money. And me personally, I've never had an issue with sponsorships, other people doing sponsorships, even as a viewer, I still very much so watch YouTube regularly. I've never had a problem with people doing um, sponsorships. I don't even care if someone does it for every single video because like, you know, they gotta make their money. They gotta feed their kids or, you know, keep their lights on. I don't know their, just because they do YouTube, I don't know their money situation. So like, I like to see people doing what they love and being supported by doing that. But I do understand how some people, particularly in the beauty industry, don't really like sponsored videos. I, I must be very honest with you. I haven't had a whole lot of, I've had, I've had not a whole, I've had none. I've had no backlash from doing sponsorships. I just have really great viewers and I feel like they feel when I succeed, so do they. And that's something that I don't take lightly. I wanna be very, very straightforward with you guys. I don't take that lightly. I don't take the things that I say to you guys and I influence to you lightly either. I understand that when I, condone a product when I endorse a product. People may try it. More people are likely to try it. And it doesn't behoove me to give y'all some garbage, <laughs> to give y'all something that I know is some garbage. No, I'm not gonna do that. I understand how some people feel as though videos can't be genuine if they're sponsored. Me personally, I've done a bunch of sponsored reviews and I've been straight up like, yeah, this is sponsored, but that doesn't 
change. There's still things that need to be fixed and here are said things that should be fixed. To me, I feel as though I don't help myself, I don't help you, and I don't help the company to lie <laughs> about things that need to be fixed. I don't help myself because again, people are gonna like think, start to associate me with plugging garbage. If y'all knew some of the stuff people be wanting me to plug out here, and sometimes I get legitimately sad to turn them down like because they be they be offering bank they offer more bank because they know their stuff is trash <laughs> like i got offered like nine thousand dollars to plug some trash like some straight up trash yo i just can't do it i know i know that i like i can look at it and be like that is garbage I, like i can't subject myself i can't subject my viewers to that but when i tell you i was sad because that's still nine thousand dollars <laughs> god if i didn't love y'all i swear God, <laughs> it doesn't help y'all because y'all end up buying this trash and it doesn't help the company because they're not getting honest reviews. So if there's a legitimate issue with their product, um, it's not being fixed. I'm just thinking myself, if I were a company, I would, some, I would want someone to bring to my attention things that are not great about it. Yeah, I just wanted to say thank you to you guys because you guys are honestly so supportive like anytime i do a sponsor video people are always like yeah kindle out there make that coin get that back and it's so funny because y'all so supportive that sometimes y'all don't realize y'all asking me to literally plug y'all garbage which i'm not gonna do because i remember one time i got i who should i talk about this screw it a company it's, it was an app it was a dating app i will not say what the dating app is but it was an app that was for uh, Asians meeting up. <laughs> Basically, it was an app for Asians to meet other Asians. And I was thoroughly confused, like, why are you contacting me? <laughs> I like tweet about it. I'm like, it's so weird. Why would they contact me? And people were like, just just talk to him, Kendall, talk to him, get the money, sis. So I'm over here, I'm like, oh, okay, my viewers seem okay with it. Let me, let me like talk to them, you know? So I go talking to them. It was awkward. It was uncomfortable because it was obvious that they wanted to appeal to people that were looking for a very specific demographic, if you know what I'm saying. Apparently they were trying to tap into the non-Asian market, which is like how when you're an Asian dating app. <laughs> They're like, yeah, we'll tap into the non, we're trying to tap into the non-Asian market and moving more towards like Asian interest. And I was like, hmm? <laughs> How do you, how are you Asian interests dating? You either are Asian or you aren't. <laughs> like, that's not how this works. <laughs> was like, is there any way to do this and not sound gross basically and i actually came up with a really good way that would have been like really chill and wouldn't be like fetishy and kind of gross <laughs> they didn't want that idea <laughs> they were like no just go for it i'm like yeah no i'm not gonna do this collaboration and ultimately i felt like it would have been against a lot of the things that i support on my channel i preach in many ways on my channel so i'm happy i didn't do it but at that time that was like the most money i had ever been offered to plug a product like i was i was offered a nice hefty bag you know all along people were like saying just do it just do it and i'm like nah something in my stomach is saying don't <laughs> like don't do this to yourself kendall and i'm so happy that i didn't because like i've been you know at the time that was the most i had ever been offered to do like a sponsorship video like a plug and I've since like been offered that same amount of money and more and I haven't had to compromise my morals <laughs> you know so it's just like follow follow your heart kids and I should have known because the moment like I was y'all I was trying to flip through hoops trying to figure out a way to make that work <laughs> like I was like I can do it like I can do it like this I can do it like that I can do it like nah can <laughs> it's just not working sis anyway with that said why did I bring this up why was I talking about this? Well, I guess I, I, well, I brought it up so much to say thank you for you guys for trusting my judgment because if y'all knew all the stuff that gets ran across my email. <laughs> but oh my God, our family is growing so quickly these days. Thank you guys for being a part of the fams. For those of you that are new around here, you probably don't know that I've been on YouTube for a hot minute. <laughs> um, and my growth was very, very gradual. A truth that at one point in my life, I used to lament over, I wanted to grow super, super fast. I've talked about this many, many times. I kind of bring this up every time I talk about subscribers and growth. Uh, 18 year old Kendall was like, yep, I'm gonna be on YouTube for three months and have a million subscribers. <laughs> and like, that is not what happened. <laughs> that is not what happened at all. Kind of made my own 
space, I guess, on YouTube in the sense that I'm just kind of here chilling. I feel like a lot of people don't come to me for anything specific, which is what I wanted so bad. Like when kind of the thing that kind of catapulted catapulted my channel originally was story times but I became very aware when people only wanted story times and I knew that's not something that I wanted I don't think it's a good idea to base a channel off of things that are very finite so like I have a very specific number of stories I don't want to keep going out to make more <laughs> like not purposefully and I've done that before it's horrible oh my god I see it all the time when I see people like base channels off of things that are very very finite like things based off of people in their lives, places that they are, stories. And I've been there, I've done that. All of that is very temporary. And I don't want people to like me because of external things, things that are inconsistent with me, which are basically everything except myself. <laughs> except myself. The only thing that will stay constant in my life is that I will be Kendall. So I want people to enjoy Kendall. And probably why I would never I've been thinking about this a lot recently and I've kind of brought this up before but I've been thinking about this a lot recently like would I show a significant other on YouTube and I keep leaning on no <laughs> there is nothing more awkward than like a YouTuber being like so yeah we broke up it's like what, what, what? I was so invested in your love like, why you let me in on your love and it just introduces a bunch of opinions into you and your relationship personally I'm not with it I feel like it puts an unnecessary strain on relationships. Okay. Okay, that's just straight up glitter on my face. This is, oh God. I told y'all, me, me and Fenty have a love-hate relationship. I'll find something, I'm like, ooh, this is, yes. And then I'll get, what is that? I mean, I guess this would make a really pretty uh, eyeshadow, but who needs this much of this color eyeshadow? I'm gonna just, I'm gonna just go on top of it with some Amrezy. God. Okay, that's better. Oh, jeebus. Okay. Okie dokie, artichokey. That's all for today. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like and share, subscribe, and all that jazz. Again, big thanks to Drop for sponsoring this video. Be sure to follow me on my social media, Instagram and Twitter, both of which are KennyJD. There shall be other videos on the screen, so check them out, have some fun, and just chill a little bit. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye.